Gentlemen, all set. Good evening. I'd like to call the Alton Board of Selectmen's meeting, April 27, 2020, to order at 6 p.m. Please all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. And Chief, would you do the honors tonight? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Does that light have to be on, Josh? It's not on this time. No. Okay. Good. Before we get to the agenda, gentlemen, just want to read again. Till further notice to keep our members and staff safe and to comply with the RSA 91-A, the state of emergency and governance orders restrictions on public gatherings. Town of Alton is moving from an in-person meeting to a remote audio participation meeting. To remotely attend the meetings, audio only, visit our website, www.alton.nh.gov. For telephone access and remote access instructions, list on the news and announcements on the home page or telephone the Selectman's Office, 603-875-2113 or 603-875-0229 between 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. for the dialing code and the meeting ID for each Selectman's meeting. Gentlemen, at this time, I ask for approval of the agenda. So moved. I would okay. uh, take a second to add tax to new business or old business. Uh, probably new business. Number three will be parks and rec. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I move uh, to new uh, old business. Uh, number five, Harmony Park. Number six. Shipley's Dock. Any other amendment to the agenda? I know. Okay, I am going to move old business in front of new business tonight because the police chief is here with us, so he doesn't have to stay through the whole part of the um, new business. Uh, at this time, chief, do you have an emergency management? Up, uh, excuse me. Any other discussion on the agenda amendments? No further discussion. I'll poll the board. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. Rochelle? Yes. Bird? Yes. No. Yes. Ruben Wentworth? Yes. All in the affirmative. The agenda passes as amended. At this time, I'll ask the chief if he has any emergency updates he wants to give, emergency management updates. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, just take a minute to address the board and the public. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank um, every member of the community and the employees of the town of Alton for their understanding and support during this time. Uh, you know, the decisions that we've had to look at and make um, among the emergency management team in conjunction with uh, members of the board of selectmen have been difficult, but it, they wouldn't have been carried out as well as they have been without the continued support of the community and the employees of the town of Alton. So I, on behalf of the emergency management team, I'd like to thank everybody for their support. Um, furthermore, right now we're continuing with the implemented emergency um, orders that have been put in place for the town of Alton, um, restricting operations within public access to any town buildings, um, doing as much business as we can remotely to comply with the social distancing uh, recommendations of the CDC, and also keeping the employees of the town of Alton as safe as possible. Uh, recently, you know, most of our uh, protocols are remaining in effect, are still in effect. We haven't introduced a lot of new policies, but what we have been doing behind the scenes is sort of troubleshooting the ripple effect of what those orders have been put into place have caused. I mean, we've had to address uh, different ways of conducting business that we weren't able to do, or we've had to figure out unique measures to take in order to do remote business. Um, another good example is there's been a lot of talk and a lot of conversation about the parking over in Mount Major. With the social distancing and people being uh, confined at home, a lot of them are reaching out to outdoor activities and hiking become, is, a, is a major um, pastime for a lot of people uh, during this time of uh, social distancing and not being able to go out to their favorite restaurants or businesses. With that, Mount Major has taken on a lot of traffic and a lot of people. Um, during the weekends and, uh, you know, nice days when the weather is nice out. 
We've uh, worked with the state of New Hampshire um, to shut down and limit the parking on the westbound lane um, to help combat that. The eastbound lane is still open right now for some of the overflow parking. And as you can probably, most of the people saw us last weekend, that's gotten to a little bit of an extreme, but we're still working to combat those issues. Uh, limiting the parking has also created some overflow parking issues throughout town, uh, Jesus Valley Road, Alton Mountain Road. Those are all topics that we've been addressing and, and working uh, in conjunction with the board to try to uh, come up with, with reasonable solutions for that. Um, so we're constantly meeting the emergency management team. I'd like to reassure you know the public that we are meeting still every Monday and Thursday. Um, and during those meetings, we're taking up all of these issues that are being brought to either members of the team or members of the board of selection for, uh, selectmen for concern. And that's what we're spending our time addressing and trying to come up with a collaborative effort to solve or, or reduce these issues that are popping up. Uh, and we will continue to do that. Right now, we're seeing um, as statewide that you know the numbers are still increasing in New Hampshire. Unfortunately, we're still seeing. So that means that most likely, you know, depending on what the governor has to say on May 4th update, um, some of these restrictions will probably be continued further out into the month of May um, to an undetermined time. Um, until we start to see a down uh, swing in numbers, we can't begin to loosen the social distancing um, parameters that we have in place right now to protect people. So we, we intend on keeping that going as long as the state um, decides to continue with their sanctions statewide, we will comply as well on a local level and keeping those in place uh, moving forward. So that's what we're continuing to doing. We're, we're marching forward, addressing every issue that is brought to us. Um, or observed by any members of the team or, or at those meetings, and uh, we will continue to do so. Does any of the board have any questions for me? I don't, but seeing while we have you speaking, Chief, would you like to go over number three, old business, and number four, old business, along with the Route 11 westbound lane by Mount Major Park, Park no parking signage, Bay, no boat trailer parking signage, side Puck, Clam Shack, and three, Jesus Valley Road, no parking sign. If you'd like to address that now, or you kind of mentioned it, sure. And we could just, that's right, Jeremy, we'll just move to number three and number four on the old business now. Well, the chief has already started talking about, so it doesn't have to repeat everything. Yeah, sure. So I'll turn over to you, Chief. Thank you. So, like I started to mention, um, you know, we, we're starting to see a little bit of a ripple effect with um, the, the pandemic and some of the sanctions that are put in place. And a lot of it has to do with parking in our outdoor recreation areas. So um, one, Mount Major has taken on a lot of activity and uh, most of you have either seen it or seen pictures of it on social media and issues with the parking on both sides of Route 11. Mount Major, unfortunately, Mount Major's parking lot is not enough to sustain a busy day hiking there. It never was in the past. Unfortunately, that's multiplied during the pandemic time um, that it's we've, we've seen it overflow both sides. So originally we had shut down temporarily. I talked to DOT on emergency management level and said, look, we, we got to do something to make this safer. Narrowing of the road, people crossing the road on a highway is not safe. Um, they agreed with us. They weren't going to shut down the park. That's a decision at the governor's level that they decided they're not going to shut down Mount Major. Um, um, but they were in agreement with us to, to work to try to resolve this. So um, our first steps were to restrict all of the eastbound lane. So the eastbound lane has a guardrail that pushes traffic out. Um, so we put temporary signage that you can see now. The state went out and put um, delinear posts in the ground for us, and we attached no parking signs from Alton Police Department um, all the way down that right-hand lane. And it has been it has been followed. We have not had one violation of those no parking, which I'm very pleased and very happy with. And that's what I'm talking about: the community support. Um, I, I have never hosted that large of a stretch area and had it adhered to so well. With that many vehicles. Right. And it's, un unfortunately, uh, one of the things that's happened is everybody's gone to the eastbound side. We do have some guardrail parts around the standing view in areas that makes it a little bit narrowing. So originally the recommendation, uh, DOT had said to us, you know, we know this is a problem and this has been a problem in the past. If we get a letter from the town requesting this to be permanent, we could put some, we could do some permanent signage in the areas where it makes it a little bit more dangerous. 
So my recommendation is before this has happened and really opened the eyes of all the parties involved, we really hadn't didn't have the buy-in from the state to combine with us to, to really put up some no parking and really post it because it, it really just didn't seem to rise to a level of, of that big of concern at that point in time. It's all been highlighted now. So my recommendation would be that we, we take advantage of that. We do make this signage permanent on the eastbound lane. Um, and I mean, excuse me, on the, on the westbound lane, all the way to the westbound lane, and then on the eastbound lane at the guardrail section that goes, that starts just before the scenic view and wraps around that current corner on the scenic view. Um, I did go out there with Todd after uh, we had one of our emergency management meetings talking about the mile markers to use those. Unfortunately, the mile markers were spread out a little far and it was containing a lot of extra area that we really didn't need to include. So as um, delineation, for the letter and, and, and talking to DOT, my recommendation was is that on the westbound lane we use from the scenic view all the way to 11D on the westbound lane. That'll shut that down in that entire area right there. And on the eastbound lane, we just use the terminology, the guardrail section just um, east of the Mount Major parking lot, uh, continuing around the scenic view. And those are the key problem areas um, that have really been pushing the traffic out and causing a lot of pedestrian traffic to, uh, crossing Route 11. Um, so if uh, so, that would be my recommendation for the board to consider for permanent um, parking, no parking signs, and then we could add in there. So uh, should we add in there to ask them to make that parking lot a little bigger? Well, the state wouldn't make the parking lot any bigger. Be New Hampshire Forest Society, Society, Society of yeah, Forest, and have to do that in Alaska. Yeah. Well, the state did that before they turned the property over to the New Hampshire Forest. A couple years ago, they went and did it. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Yeah, as soon as they did it, they turned all that property over to the protection of the New Hampshire Society of Forest because now the New Hampshire Protected Society of Forest hires a private contractor to plow that and sand and salt it out. State really does not go in there and maintain that at all. She said, I'm a letter. That's a very good possibility that we can talk about in the future. Separate just because one, they're different entities, but two, um, I think we will have complete support on the no parking. I think it might be a little mixed on the support for the other area. Yeah, they make yeah. it a little safer up there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Uh, my only concern, Chief, is on it, it's working good the way it is now, just one side of the road. Once we go to the other side, you're going to have. The pedestrian problem still going to be walking down both sides of the road. Plus, they're going; those people are going to have to cross over the road, and that's a 55 mile an hour speed zone. I think we might be confused. We're, 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 we're shutting down the opposite lane. That's, that's the westbound lane. Oh, you're yeah, going to keep that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're keeping that oh, shut down. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. The, the lake, the lake so side. So that will keep everybody that does park on the Mount Major side. That was the major issue was to keep right. people moving along the road. Yeah, but this is an addition to the yes. Mexican. I thought you meant you were going to even <laughs> you were gonna grab the good spots on, on the other side. There are some good areas they could pack. Right, and get off the shoulder. Yes, yeah. the pedestrian issue that's mm -hmm. the problem. Right. Yeah, the only stuff I wanted to add to the eastbound side was just the guardrail section around the scenic view uh, because it pushes everybody out into the traffic. Yeah. Break down. Yeah. But they don't mind even walking in the traffic. They, mm -hmm. I mean, they don't even yeah. think about the cats flying. Yeah. They're over there. Yeah. I went through on Saturday. I was on the phone. And uh, it seems to me they were taking advantage of the scenic overlook for parking. Yeah. So there, if they did that, they're crossing the road again. Mm -hmm. So maybe we need some signage there. This is only for the scenic, you know, because. There were more cars in that scenic overlook than I've ever seen yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, I'm coming through from Laconia, somebody that was parked off off the road, fair enough, and a big truck, big big pickup truck, didn't see my little Corolla, and practically pulled down the road right in front of me. Mm -hmm. Couldn't see me. So there is a bit of obstruction because it's windy there. Right. Yes, right. Absolutely. Exactly. So, so, I mean, we can't blow the speed limit. The city could blow the speed limit. And it's only, it would only need to be lowered when that area is full anyway so i don't know whether can we ask the state to patrol a little heavier on weekends for a while or okay. 
Some of the, the problem is that the people are, I mean, they've been bound in their houses. So we're getting a lot of extra we are. up there. We are. It'll alleviate. You know, so it's, I mean, hopefully another month or so, we'll start coming out of this. I hope. Chief, so my question for you, coming down the east down lane, after you come past the edges headed towards Alton Bay, are you going to run the no parking down to where the other road entrances, the Cedar Mountain right there where there's a cable cross? Because that's where about where the guardrail ends. That's where I was going to run it to where the guardrail ends there at that point. And then that way, if there's somebody trying to get in at the second entrance, there's still, it widens up all right there and they can use the shoulder on the eastbound side there. Yeah, a few people are back in there. Yeah, they'll, they'll usually pull in there. So. Um, but we have, uh, and we have been working with Troop, uh, uh, the state of the Troop, Troop B, B, sorry, Jeez. <laughs> it was just getting in my mind there for a minute, but Troop B out of Tamworth, so I've been talking to uh, the barracks commander over there, and they were on board with us helping, you know, post that and stuff like that. We had the, the posting <coughs> really available on our trailer, so we went out and we did it, but they have been sending troopers out here to help with our duty officers to patrol that. Um, you know, they're very, unfortunately, like a lot of agencies around the state, they're feeling the most as far as personnel. They're, they're down several spots and they don't have the staffing that, they're, that they should have right now. So they're, they're filling the gaps where they can, but they're doing, they're doing the best they can right now. We wouldn't get much more assistance out of that just because they don't have the personnel. Oh, I think, I think it helped a lot if they're just closing that west side down. Yeah, and I, and I did put one of our officers up there for quite a bit of time. Um, I had a couple of part timers helping out this weekend, filling back filling shifts and and um, stuff. So I, I had I put that out as a directed patrol for them as well to have them out there and, and being present and you know parking off side of the road even with the lights on to slow people down a little bit, keep it up. So we'll we'll keep doing the best we can for sure. I agree. And, and keep trying. I agree. It'll probably reduce after the pandemic woes are behind us. But I mean, let's face it, it is a popular hiking. Oh, it is. Yeah. It always has way up there. Just yeah. shut more and more popular. Okay, lane. okay gentlemen, how about um, that we I have a motion to have the town administrator draw up a letter for the board of select and request and request that is recommended by the commission. Is it going to come back in front of us next meeting? We'll have to come back before so we can sign it and send the letter. We can out. read it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Second. Motion made by Ruben Weimer to have the town administrator prepare a letter to the Hampshire DOT in regards to no parking on the westbound lane and the eastbound lane uh, in the area of Mount Major upon the recommendations of the police chief, second by Virgin McDonald. Any other discussion? I'll pull the board. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. Rochelle? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Ruben Weimer? Yes. Vote is in the affirmative. Move on to the next item for the chief, which would be no boat trailer parking signage besides Pops clamshell. Sure. So this was another issue that we had talked about at the emergency management meetings that had popped up. Um, we had some overflow parking with boat trailers at that gravel portion of the rocks um, to the uh, conference center side of Pops clamshell, and they were pulling the vehicles in and having the, either the trailer hang out of the crosswalk into to town property or vice versa, backing in as far as they can up the hill, and the vehicles were still nudging out in there. It's been, it's, it's been an issue because it's not consistent with the town ordinance of no trailer parking, which is uh, right. on the other side of the town property, um, because there's a little bit of a, a, a discussion about ownership of property, private of property versus town property. So. With talking after talking about it at the meetings, but also going out and physically looking at it, I took um, the, the recommendation is is that we put um, consistent no boat trailer parking signs, just like we have on the other side, but we put them at the line just over the crosswalk onto the gravel section. That section, first section, right over the shoulder, is the common area where the property line. So, so and, uh, John did a, a lot of research on that and actually stated that there's a granite marker in there underneath mm -hmm. that gravel um, that shows with it. But the recommendation would be to come in probably two or three feet on either side of that section and put two no trailer parking signs. On. The reason we can't close it off is the conference center owns it. They're in support of us doing this, but they also have an arrangement with POPs for one, their employees use that as over <coughs> in the summertime with their lease with the, the conference center. And two, he has a dumpster removal company that comes in and dumps their 
So we can't put permanent signage to obstruct that. This would give them room to get around, but I really think it will strongly discourage anybody that's going in there right now with a trailer from parking in there with a trailer. Nobody wants to risk it in their truck and trailer towed. Um, so I, I think no just work. having those in there would, would we have where these signs say no parking both trailers anywhere in the bay? Then you'd have to eliminate it because you couldn't have it in one spot and think everyone's going to read it. No, no we could start instead of having the new sign. We're going to have signs made up, have the new ones made up that way instead of just no boat trailer parking here and here and here. Put it no boat trailer parking in the Bay Area. <coughs> it's, it's a pot, that's a possibility that we could do it, yes. You know, start as we replace these signs, start making them that way so we, they understand that. You can't find a cubby hole over here because if it's in the Bay Area, we're going to tow you. How about reminder signs about the policy of parking on the letter S road? I mean, that's the policy. Uh, signs on both sides of the road. Proper trailer parking is on letter S road. I think we have a sign down at the Bay now at the boat ramp that's there is yeah. parking out yes. on the Bay yes. side, I think, but yes. on the other side. Yeah, I don't think put any signs on the other side. I don't think there's any signs on the other side. Oh, and it should have yeah. parking because you're putting your boat in. So you should be able to read it as you're putting your boat in. Yeah. And the only reason we, the only reason we have this problem right now is because of Downing Landing is closed right. down. Right. We didn't Downing Landing's opening was open. We wouldn't have this problem no. at all. No, a lot of people are packing over. Yeah. So by launching parking. by launching at the boat ramp, they should see that sign. They should. Without having to spend extra funds to put another sign across the street by the railroad sign. At least that's why I did. Yeah, that's that's why I'm saying if we put no packing anywhere in the bay. Your boat trailers and start making the signs that way so they don't find these cubby holes and we got to keep buying signs. Well, once the Downs Landing opens up again, that won't be an issue. Yeah, I think this is going to get back worse and worse. So, just the main fact of the signs saying no trail parking, I would think would be adequate. All right, Jim, I don't think this needs a motion to put two signs here because it is on town property and it is part of the Bay Ordinance of no trail parking. Would you like to motion that? Everything, <laughs> gentlemen. There's no other discussion on the chief. I would consider a motion to place no trailer parking signs at the property line of the Christian Conference Center Pops clamshell with the town at the town's property. So moved. Second. Made by Reuben Wentworth. Second by Mr. Holt. Any further discussion? All the board. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Lurchell. Yes. Mr. Whitman. Yes. Mr. Holt. Yes. Weber, yes. Vote is in the affirmative. We'll move on to the next one. To be Jesus Valley Road. Okay, so Jesus Valley Road uh, became a popular site too after uh, some of the postings went on. We, uh, the police department was called up there not last weekend, but the weekend before, and is when it originally surfaced. And when my officers went up there, took photographs for me to take a look at um, when they responded and spoke to the property owners at the very end of the road. Uh, the road, those of you, I think most everybody's familiar with that area, but for, for those of you that are listening, uh, the road goes to a certain point. Um, at the end of the road, it stops, and there's a private drive that goes up further to the Lang property up in there. The Lang property was the one that actually called us two weeks ago, or two weekends ago, um, where they had their private driveway obstructed by people that were parking there to access the trail system by the old Class 6 road. <coughs> So we went out there, we addressed the issue there, there and then, but said that we would, you know, bring the problem back um, to the emergency management team and talk a little bit more about what we could do over there. Um, I, originally, it was talked about um, posting one side of the road. Part of the biggest problem they have there is that road doesn't really have any shoulders um, that are suitable shoulders to get off the road. So when they park to abreast down the roadway, you can't get an apparatus down there. And if we, that's an important area because that's where our fire department deploys for injured hikers, lost hikers, which we're getting an uptick in that given the amount of people that are utilized in the area now. So we, and you know, we, the police department can patrol it, but we know that, you know, if somebody parks there and then takes off on the mountain, it takes us a while to get a tow truck to the Alton area because there's nobody towing locally in, in town right now. So we have to get somebody from the other area to get up there, tow the car, and there's no telling how long that will take us to get a car out of the way. Um, we don't use tilt and towing on one party. Tilt and towing right on one party. Yeah, it, it, 
They're not, they're not towing anymore. Yeah, I don't think so. They, we don't have anybody that's still locally towing in town. And I, almost everybody that's ever started a towing business, even legally, comes to see it comes to see me and give an insurance binder so they get a rotation. So. But um, so unfortunately, you know, patrolling it and there there are consequences. But we're going to be dealing with out of staters and people traveling from all over. Those warnings are only going to they're, they're only going to get out so far, so the word's not going to travel as well as it does uh, on other other local areas that aren't highly visited by out-of-state traffic and stuff like that. People coming in that aren't familiar with the area. So uh, putting some sort of signage, you know, parking between signs on one side of the road was originally what was discussed. Um, and I think that was brought to the board last week. Um, and the recommendation, I talked to Ken, and we talked about all of these areas in depth because Ken's got a lot of knowledge on these areas as well. And um, he was going to get the signs made up and no parking between signs. Instead of trying to line a, res a rural road like that with no parking signs every 20 feet, we're just going to do the no parking between signs and keep them off one side of the road. Um, Ken is recommending that um, keep them off the right side of the road because that's the side of the road going in that leads right into the private drive. <laughs> and if they stay to the left, there's more room for them to get off the road and it leaves a wider opening for the residents to get in and out of their driveway down there at the end. Um, but we talked a little bit about it a little further at today's meeting. And one of the other issues, so we didn't get called up there this weekend, but we did get reports that I think the number was 40 cars. It was 40 more cars up there this weekend. Um, so we didn't call, and I think the Langs didn't call because they knew that we were actively working on this. Um, but um, they did. Um, Pass that information along to the fire chief, and we talked about it in our meeting today. Um, so there was some talk about two other options that um, to go along with the no parking signs that might be that would be beneficial. Um, one would be putting an official sign from the town where the town road stops, because right now the homeowners have two you know private property. You don't trespass those little square signs you buy you know at the hardware store, and you put on 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 a, on a tree. They just don't really command as much attention as a town sign that says um, town road ends here or a private road beyond this point, metal sign on an actual post. Um, you know, that's something to consider, the board to consider. I know that we were trying not to get into, you know, hundreds of signs to put all around town, but these are issues that, you know, though they're being highlighted right now, they have been issues in the past as well. Also, how fit of the taxpayer to have, but it, it isn't because it, it got to the point. One of the other reports we got today, and we talked about in the meeting, was they actually were pulling up and parking in their driveway at the end, and they he, they had a lot of hikers that weren't familiar. They're not familiar with the air, right? And so they were walking up through the property to access the trail when they didn't realize you could access it from below. So they were walking up <coughs> through their property, and the the property owners were continuing to deal with that because. There's two houses up there now, so they're walking right in between the two houses. Um, and, you know, that would that would be concerning to me if I lived up there. I know that. And, and we can't be up there all the time dealing with hikers. It's not just a single trespass issue. It's, you know, a recreational area that a lot of people are going to try to take advantage of. Um, so the other thing that was the reason they were having foot traffic through their property is there's absolutely no identification down there as to where a trailhead is. Um, so people that aren't familiar with the area who get it on, there's a lot of those pop-up sites that are like camp, like hiking sites, and they tell you people go on there, it's like a block, and they'll put it out, and that's how the word gets out, but there's no real description. It's just the end of Jesus Valley Road is where the trail is, and nobody really knows that's where that is. That's a legitimate hiking trail? What's that? That's a legitimate hiking trail? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. That conservation. Put a sign over there that says trailhead. Conservation already has signs out on the lower part. It's the beaver pond that's at the end of the road that marks different trail walking trails. So yes, the conservation missions possibly if they're part of that trail system should mark it or the snowmobile club. They have the, it's basically the snowmobile club that the chief is talking about where they can act. Oh, that's where they're access that can we put it have maybe get a hold of them and have them put a sign up that says trailhead. Or just open on there. But they should be. <laughs> the other thing is, years passed ever since I was a kid. When yeah. Woodrow's lived at the end of the road, right? You go to the end of the road and you follow the trail all the way up. That's where the snowmobile trail went. There's two links in the snowmobile trail. One comes up off of Route 11, goes out behind the Langs House property. The other one cuts off the road on the Class Six road and the old sheep road to come back to Mountain. There's a trail there. So there's two trail systems that lead up to that. 
but there, but the houses, and as it has history have shown, if you ever use Google Maps, you look up boundary boundaries in the town or tax maps. They don't even list the current owners. The owners from still 30 years it. ago. So the old trail system still shows going right between on the old side of the farmhouse because on the uh, lot it's nothing but a gravel pit years ago, and people were just parking it. Well, since then, in the last two years, Danny Lang has built a house up there on right. the other side of the property. So now you got two homes up there. I don't think it's anybody's door yet. They just, oh, well, here we are. It's a parking yeah, Unfortunately, yeah, quite a few acres up there. Unfortunately, visiting people in our community want to park wherever they want to feel suitable to them to go hiking, have a pleasurable day. Unfortunately, they forget they wouldn't want that in their door. Right. No. Right. Yeah, you got to be respectful. So it's and, and it is a problem. You can't just shut down no parking because the conservation commission already has an easement up there for the Beaver Dam, right. which has a trail system around that. But I think the chief's right. I think at the end of the Beaver road, Dam's below that, though, right? Just just below it, up far, mm-hmm. and that extends out over 100 acres. So I think chief's right. The municipal sign at the end, down road ends here, private property beyond this point. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. And say no turn or something on it. Yeah, no turn around. Something, that, something that'll that. command a little more yes, respect. Yeah, and right. Right. Unfortunately, those little signs just don't. I make a motion. We allow the chief to have Kenny put a couple of signs up on the end of Jesus Valley Road that shows the end of the town property there. My second. second motion has been made by Miss McDonald to allow the chief to work with Mr. Roberts about putting up. He's, the road ends at this price, private property beyond that. Two signs, one on each side. So yes. Demands attention. Okay. Second by Mr. Lorcel. Any further discussion? Yeah, I'll can I add to that, too? You want to amend your motion? Yes, yeah, sir. I'd like to amend it to send a letter to the Snowmobile um, Association to see if we can get them to put up a sign that says trailhead. Okay. And the Conservation Commission. Conservation ask, ask, the yeah. two, ask the two of them to work in conjunction. Yeah. Okay, Ms. McDonald has amended his most original motion, having the chief, Mr. Robbins, put up two signs at the end of Jesus Valley Road, delineating town property versus private property, and also to have to send a letter to the Soulville Club and Conservation Commission, hopefully work in conjunction of setting up the trailhead markers for the Mount Major Trail System. Do I have a second? I have a second. Any further discussion on the amendment? No further discussion on the amendment. No, I have a Vote, I'll take a poll of the board for the amendment. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Lurchell? Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. Holt? Yes. Yes. And it passes in the affirmative. Now back to the original motion. To putting two signs up at the end of Jesus Valley Road, acknowledging the end of town road and private property, along with asking the Stoneville Club and the Conservation Commission work in conjunction of marking out the trailheads away from the private property. And the second was by Mr. Rochelle, was it? Okay. Any further discussion? I'll pull the board again. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. Rochelle? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Voted with the permanent. And Chief, I think that takes you to the end of your that session. should be the end of it. All right, sir. You're more than welcome to stay. <laughs> Thank you. So at this time, before we do move on with the rest of the whole business, I do. We didn't have an announcement, the submission of public comments, question, concern. Received from Dick Shea at AOL.com, sent Monday, April 27, 2020, at 11.46 a.m. To Board of Selectmen, subject letter to Board of Selectmen. Please accept this email as public comment for your next Board of Selectmen's meeting. Robert Shea, 84 Roberts Cove Road, Alton, New Hampshire. I was very pleased that the 2021 article funding road improvements and complete construction was approved by all the voters and have been following prog- and have been following progress to date. The board, board met by telephone. Mr. Ken Roberts recently discussed his approach to this year's program. Several roads requiring attention were reviewed, but the only mention of Roberts Cove Road was in regard to the highway department having marks and trees for removal. At the February 10th meeting held to discuss the board's preferences for this year's road work, Mr. Roberts indicated, if I understood him correctly, that Roberts Cove Road would likely be a multi-year project with some of the portion of the work done by our town crews and some by outside contractors. A survey would be required, as would some outside engineering work. 
I realize there are legitimate concerns for the effect that the public, current public health shutdown might have on town tax revenues, but I'd like to request that the board allow Mr. Roberts to at least contract for the required survey work, possibly for the engineering work as well. This would allow some progress to be made on the project without a major commitment of funds and provide information on what issues, if any, would need attention going forward. I understand a public hearing will be required at some point. The survey results would be of value at that time. Thank you for your consideration, and please also accept my thanks for the four efforts the board is making to keep the town on during this difficult time. Richard Shea. Mr. Roberts is on later on tonight about the road reconstruction, so I think we can hold off on any discussion on that until then. That is all that I have for announcements from emails that have come in from the public. Now that since we moved up old business, request for hawkers and vendor permit, bait, brew, and organic move now. You have that in your packet there, and you get the letter from Mr. Devers. Um, this young lady asks, is she on the line? Okay. Uh, Genevieve is Hello. on the line with us. Hi there, Jenny. How are you tonight? Good. How are you? Good. I'm going to hold you out for just a second while I talk to the board about this. Um, sure. She came in last week looking for a waiver to the Hawkers and Vendors Permit. And we had all stated last week, as long as we felt that she was going to be on private property, that she would not need a Harkers and Vendors permit. The only way she would need one if she traveled throughout the town. That was my understanding last week, she was primarily looking just to set up on her own property that they're purchasing out on Suncook Valley Road. I read Mr. Deaver's letter. Uh, he's in contact with her. I believe Liz has. John's feeling as long as she's on that property, she would not need a Harkers and Vendors permit. Genevieve, at this time, I'm going to ask you, um, are you, so is my understanding you're primarily just going to stay on the property there? Yeah. So, questions up. Okay, Mr. LaRochelle wants to ask you a question. Actually, I was going to say, um, after review from uh, the building inspector, um, you also have a special exception pending with the zoning, correct? Yes, for for a cafe though, so not not in the garden. Right. No, but what you're yeah. here for is for uh, whether or not we agree with you not having a um, Harkers uh, um, vendors. vendors license to pay five hundred dollars. Yeah. That's what our actual issue is here this evening. That's what we need to decide. The, I, I yeah. want to bring it forward that the zoning board will take care of the issue with um, going forward with the special exception. So that's not something to be decided here this evening. So I just want to make okay. that clear that we're, we're just deciding on the vending license uh, of the okay. waiver of the $500, correct? Okay, yep. Okay, thank you. Just wanted, just wanted to clarify it. I appreciate it, thank you. It's Mr. Holt. Uh, have you taken ownership of the property yet? Are you asking me if, if we own it? We um, purchased it December 13th. Well, yes, they do. They purchased it December 13th. So you have ownership. Okay. Yeah. You, were you going to have a cafe there and the um, food wagon? You're going to have both on yep. the property? So um, once the cafe opens, the, I won't need the food. The food truck is supposed to be for events and you know doing things um you know like graduation parties and weddings and stuff like that um well that's why but, that's why i'm asking that's why i'm asking yeah. that once so once you get the cafe cafe open you're going to use the food truck around town yeah so once the cafe is open yes i'll be doing events not necessarily in alton but just as a general um concept the food truck is not supposed to be parked in one spot but the, so once the cafe is open, um, the food truck won't also be there. It will be used just for events. Well, I think once the cafe opens and the food truck comes off the property, she's going to need the Hawker vendors. Okay. Well, I want to clarify something. Mm -hmm. Tom Minister just clarify what I mean. It's not called a 
hawkers and vendors license, even though we tell people to fill it out that way. It's actually called a sales and solicitation on public property, private, or park property. And we'll call it a hawkers vendors license. Right. But I, I know, I'm just clarifying the record. Thanks. And I have to agree with you, as long as it's on private property, she doesn't need the hawkers and vendors. But if she comes downtown, parks on Main Street, Church Street, where the Bay Area, whatever, she would have to file for hawkers and vendors. Mm -hmm. yes. Sales of solicitation on public property. Sorry, Jimmy. Um, Jimmy. So at this time, I don't know how the board feels, but I, I'll take a consensus of the board and we'll put it to a vote. But I myself feel that she does not need it as long as they're on their own private property. That's right. Yes. Mr. McDonald, you feel I, the same I way? I feel the same way, but once it comes off that property, I, that's going around, then she's going to have to come back for it. I uh, only, only in the sales of all. Other towns we don't. Other towns do. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If she's right. going to drive around and stop anywhere other than private property, then yes, she would need it. Mr. Whitman. Hey. Mr. Holt. Yes. Sir. Genevieve, at this time, where you're going to put it on your own private property, the Board of Selectmen do not feel you need the Harker's and Vendor's license. If you plan on participating on Main Street or any public property, I, I feel at that time you would have to apply for them. I don't know if that's okay. what the rest of them are. Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. I understand that. Thank you. So at this time, we're going to take a motion to deny your request because you're going to be on private property. We'll make that motion that we're acknowledging you're on private property and you have the right to do that. Okay. Is that satisfactory to you? Yes, it is. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And do you have anything else you'd like to say? No, not at all. I appreciate this process kind of moves quickly and I appreciate you guys taking the time to look into it and um, figure it all out. So thank you so right, much. Well, good, good luck on your cafe and then I'll take the motion now from one of my board members. I need a motion that she's not required to have the vendor's license. Basically what I need a motion though for is to deny the Harker. No. Oh, oh, the Harker's vendor because that's the way it's listed. Deny okay. the Harker's invented along with that she has the right to operate on her private property. I make a motion to deny the Hawker's Vendors license on, uh, for her, uh, that she doesn't need it for a uh, private property. Last second. Okay, motion made by Mr. Lorschel to deny the Hawker's <coughs> Vendors license due to the fact that she not, does not have to have one as long as she stays on her private property. Second by Mr. Witt. Any further discussion? I'll pull the board. Paul? Yes. 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 Mr. McDonald? Yes. Ruben Wartworth? Yes. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Vote is in the affirmative. Thank you, Genevieve. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. So at this time, we guess we need to pull up Mr. Roberts, Highway Department Road Reconstruction Public Hearing Discussion. We'll wait for Josh to let us know. Mr. Roberts, are you with us? Hello. Mr. Roberts, Hello. how are you? Hi, good, how are you? Good, sir. So we have you here before us tonight on one issue. We've got, got a couple issues, but we'll have to go back to the other one. About the road reconstruction public hearing. Discussion yes. was talked about that. Find out if it was the state law or if it was the, something that was enacted by the town of all and board of selectmen as a policy. Looking into it, um, the town administrator and yourself and the discussions about it, it sounds more like it was a thing the selectmen did in years past, just the roads are going to be redone. Is that the way you understand it, too? Yes. And during your meetings with several of the property owners on the roads that the selectmen had discussed and you were wanting to do this year, has there been any concerns about not holding a public hearing because of No, uh, what I've what I've received from most of them, I mentioned there may not be a public hearing, and this was the major discussion and the talk with their neighbors, and, and basically they said, well, why do we have to go do a public hearing if we've already talked to you? That's kind of what it came down to. You think the folks you talked to would sign off on a letter saying they understand that we will not be holding a public hearing this year, and they're fine with what we're going to move forward with? Right. And I basically told them all, if there's any other problems, please please come directly to me. 
and we would address them. Gentlemen, I'm going to let you ask Mr. Roberts a question or any discussion you want to have with them. I'll turn it over to you folks. So it's been determined that it's not a written and gold rule that we have to have the public hearing? Right. I would think that considering what the country is going through, we would have it under these circumstances. Mr. Holt? Sounds good to me. Mr. Lurichelle? Big dog, yes. Room one with yes. So it is the board's consensus, Ken, that we go ahead and move forward. My only feeling is I would like to have all the neighbors that you've talked to sign off on it, only so we didn't fall, we don't get hit upside the head with somebody saying, well, I didn't know this. Uh, what, I, what I'd like to do is, uh, Mr. Chairman, is readdress a letter to them yes, sir. Um, and send it back, out, another one back out, mentioning that there will not be a public hearing and that any any issues within any roadway, please direct them at me and I will direct them at the Board of Selectmen if I can't handle them. Okay. And you, uh, as a second certified? mailing. Excuse are me? Gonna, are you gonna send them certified? I can't, if you'd like. I, I would like so because that way they, nobody can say they never received it. Right, yep. I know it will cost a little more, but I think it'd be well worth and our so best you go to do this. Sounds good to me. Ms. McDonald? Yes. Yes. I think we should have yes. a vote. Yes. Okay. You need a vote on this? Ma'am? Not really. Okay. So, Ken, you have the full blessing of the board, board to go ahead with the second letter addressed to the folks. That is the okay. public hearing that would be moving forward with road reconstruction. Does that sound good to you? Yes, I'll address the letter. I'll have the letter drafted in the morning, set it up for approval of the town administrator prior to sending it out. Sounds good. Gentlemen, you all set with that part? Yes. Okay. So, Ken, that was an easy one. I'm going to put you at bay, though, until we get through with the rest of all business, if that's okay. Could I just mention two things, if I may? Of course. Uh, the signs at the end of Jesus Valley Road were already ordered. I do have them. I should be picking them up tomorrow. And basically, it says no parking beyond this point. And that would be right and left of the right and left of the roadway before it goes up the hill. That'd be right right at the end of the town property? Right at the end of the town property. Basically that hill going up is private property. We have permission of the landowner to turn the plow trucks around on the top because it's easier for us. And that's, that's the only reason we've gone up that far. Uh, but I can put those right and left at the very bottom. So it would be basically no parking signs all the way up the right hand side, which again, we should pick up tomorrow, should have them installed by Wednesday. So there's no parking between uh, signs, and then when you get to the very top, it will say no parking beyond this point. Okay, very nice. Good. Okay, nice. That, that's one. And then the second one is, I have the two signs sitting right here because I did pull them out, because so I knew I got extras. And what it says in the bay, and I have two signs that will say it, it says, uh, no trailer parking in bay area. And with your permission, I'll install those two signs right next to Pops. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 You got a consensus there? Beautiful. Okay, that's my only two comments on those. Thank you. All right, Mr. Roberts, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Moving on to old business, which would be number five, the Harmony Park. Yes, uh, <clears throat> uh, we got this packet last week of the expenses on yes. Harmony Park. Uh, Railing quotes until uh, so we get all the railing quotes back. You know. Yes, this is what the expenditures are up today. Yes, sir. How much money is left? Yes, sir. Totally, totally confused. Uh, yes, I didn't know you were going to bring this up tonight. I would have brought my pack with me, so I'm going to go by what you have to say. Obviously, well, uh, yes, yes. I'm, I'm trying to find out and how much money is available and what the balance is. Uh, are you supposed to read these? If you look at GMI asphalt, they were paid according to this, to the best of my knowledge, 
$117,910. I don't have that. I never saw that. Okay. Uh, I believe this was given to all the soil. It was, but I didn't realize you were bringing it on night. I didn't bring any of my information. Oh. I didn't get mine. Yes, do we have a good copy of it? And if you, and then I add up what we paid Mitchie Corporation, according to this, and on the front page listing, it's got the 2,450 done in, uh, I believe, 17, which was for engineering. But I add the two together, or add all three, and I come up with 159,904 that we've expended. It says paid out in 219 for Harmony Pack 144794 here. But then it says we have a beginning balance of 166314, which that is on this sheet here. That match. And also, when the project was first done, I met with uh, town administrator. I was not a selectman, and I believe I was, yeah, I was on the budget committee. But uh, for the same reason, and I got basically I was shown that we spent four forty six thousand oh ninety six with bitchy block. That doesn't match anything here. And the bid for GMI was 144,012. That comes up to 190,150. But I got figures, nothing jives. And I'm totally confused. And according to my calculations, we are going to be short a lot of money. For about, uh, according to what I got here, we're about five, you, and you got about, let's see, one, one sixty nine approximately left, and you spent one fifty seven. Doesn't it doesn't come up to twenty four thousand? Is what you say. Hey, I know there was a report done by Laura. Have you gone in and sat down with Laura? You gone over the figures? Well, kind of had to. Can I do that? Epidemic. As far as I'm, I'm sure you can. Oh, can, you, can he come in though and meet with Laura? These tables. He sat there. She sat over here. I mean, he comes in for emergency. Yeah. Yeah. And he, you would have to bring him in. So, Mr. Chairman? No. Just a second, Ken. Yeah. Bob, you'd need to schedule a date and time with Laura. You would sit in here with social distancing, and you would bring your packet, and she would have her own packet. Oh. And if you could ask her the question, she could explain things to you. Two is there's also maybe not showing in your booklet there. There was money taken out of the highway department. Yeah. Left over from their budget that was put in to pay for some of these extra expenses. And Mr. Rogers on the phone, so I'm gonna ask him to chime in on this. Is that correct, Ken? Yeah, there was actually twelve thousand six hundred and fifty nine ninety that was taken encumbered by the Board of Selectmen. And then there was twenty four thousand dollars left we owe yes, GMI. Sir. Uh, which that money is still there to pay them, yeah. if I'm not mistaken on that. Yeah, the 12000 has been taken out. They had to be taken out before December 31st of last year. Right. So the, what's left is the balance is the 24000 which is the 10%. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's here. That's on here. Yeah. Well, I guess what... The, Maybe the answer, but your question is better because I don't have all the papers in front of me and gone over the numbers. So you sit down with Laura and see if Laura can show you where these numbers are not adding up for you or 
but she was confined in error somewhere in there that she's done. Have a copy of anything that you think that we need. Well, normally, I probably would have done that. The condition we're in today, things are a little different. But she could probably bring in all the paperwork itself and bring it in, if sit said, down with you, yeah, and go back and forth. Because yeah. this is hard to do over the telephone. It is. And that way, it's for me. It is for any of us. And I, but I think that way it might answer some of your questions better. And then if you don't agree with her numbers, then we can look into it at, at a regular meeting setting. Right. Oh, I got another. You're done with that one? Uh, go ahead. Yeah. I had one more question about the board. Uh, have we done anything, uh, neighbors, problem with that wall that fell in? Out of yet. Not as of yet. We they did go and pick up the debris off off the dock mm -hmm. in the stairs, and it was it was that was the day that it was pretty cold and staying out. That's what and we knew what happened before that. What are we going to do? Put the wall back up? Yes. Can we do we that without a permit? No. No. We're just going to answer. What we decided is we would hold off and discuss the retaining wall until Harmony Wall got brought back up. Yes, so we're not ready. To, we're not at that point to rediscuss and open all that up again. Why are we waiting and, and kicking the can down the road? We're going to be at the end of May before they even get back in there to straighten out a beach. So because and we're waiting for we're railings. The, the fencing quotes. We've only oh. received one, and it was 36 inches high. And if I remember correctly. The board wanted something shorter, and that was only from one company when the board had recommended a couple of other companies as well. So we're waiting for those responses. And I understand that. Okay. But we can still do this how many pack and decide on the block to get them in there to straighten out the beach and, and put everything back together and then put the railings on after. Because we're going to end up in June or 4th of July in there still trying to straighten out a beach and everything else. So we're, we're following the wants to change something, by all means, it will be done. Our instructions were we we're going to bring it up the following meeting. That was the no, instruction. No, yes. Two to three weeks. Two to three weeks. We had to get the quotes in. We had to get all the quotes in. And I agree with that. Raylands, we don't even have to have the quotes yet. But that's We can put GMI in there, putting everything back together. Mr. Chairman, we're going to get all the quotes in. We're going to figure out what this job's going to cost us. We don't know. And after reading this, we sure don't. No, no, we don't. There's no extra money in there, so there's going to be extra money that's having right. to take out of the budget. Yeah, but how much? Well, this we is don't know yet. Well, that's why. <coughs> that's why we're not going to do it. But, do anything yet. but you can still yeah. let GMI do the rest of their contract and finish, finish that project, and then we can put the railings or do what we okay. got to do. I want to stop everybody here. The way the board directed Mr. Roberts to go out and get quotes on the fence, we were going to stop all work. We got to. Cease and desist on that job right now. The selectmen have not released that. Right. that was, after, after that's, we, no, he's right. All came down. We brought up the meeting. We asked the highway agent to go in, Mr. Roberts, go to one of his guys, get all the blocks off the dock, out of the water, put them up the hill. We never instructed Mr. Roberts to redo the, do the wall. We never instructed him to refill and back behind or anything. We hadn't decided. We said we were going to wait until Harmony Walk came back. We were going to discuss what the costs are going to be and where the funds are going to come out of to pay for the extra costs that are entitled. So nobody hasn't done what they're supposed to do. They've done everything we've asked them to do. cease and desist till we figure out what we're going to do. Right. If, that, if I'm wrong with that, what do you guys need to do? No, no, you're right. The only thing I would like to add to that, if I may, Mr. Chairman, is I would like to address the collapse wall because that's a kind of a separate entity except for the fact that it, it fell over um, and there was water that could have come from the road, washed out behind a new wall and into it. I don't think he should wait until we decide to fix the, the wall itself and wait for railing or anything like that. I think we really, good faith, should go over there and, and dig out behind it, restack it, and he's the homeowner is well aware of it. he's not looking for anything new. He's not looking, he wants it restacked. That wall was leaning before we started the job for what? For two, why should the rest of the people when we lift because stay at home water or anything, why should they not be able to use the town beach? 
He should have to wait like the rest of them. Now, my question is, do we have an issue? Well, do, we should be doing that block and lowering it down and setting that whole wall and well, finishing yes, this do. job. We should. And then come back in and discuss it. We right. can't finish the job until we actually, bought, to Bob's point, is we need to figure out where we're at cost-wise and how much more it's well, going to cost. The change is what's going to cost, which is GMI. Mm -hmm. so well, you, one, got, you got a water cost. One, you got, you already asked GMI, you're asking GMI to go back and tear down that part of that wall, replace wood blocks. Yes. That's not part of the job description already. So now we already got an added cost. We don't know, but Mr. Roberts, do I believe we have cost yet on that? Yeah, in the package, and we've only got a partial package. Uh, just to enlighten everybody, we have Michi Corps' estimate of the change in the wall. It had to be re-engineered. They're not going to charge us the engineering cost, but they're also going to there's different blocks have got to come in as far as corner blocks because of the way it's stacked. But we actually had a GMI volunteer because they have a job going in Anticor to drop off the extra block to Michi Corps. That's part of the estimate that the board will see when the package comes to them. And uh, GMI is ready to come back in and finish whatever whatever is decided by the board. And uh, we have one cost estimate for a 36-inch rail. It's like $11,000. And we have Alan from East Coast Welding. He's trying to come up with an estimate that's going to be probably it's custom made, but, you know, because they don't sell an 18 inch rail. So that's going to be interesting because it will be fairly high. As far as the wall goes, because of the type of block that fell over, it looked like somebody had done something between the block. Lack of a yeah. better term, it looked like caulking. Yeah. And the only thing, because it is cement, it's very similar, I think, to the cement that's used on the, the wall that we have uh, to attach the top block. So if we did put that wall back up, the only thing I'd do is see if I get some extra cement and use that between the blocks that we restack and we can pin. Now, we as the highway department, that'll be up to the board of selectmen, we can go back in and do it. In research, we have found that there has never been a wetlands permit for that piece of property. And that property just sold yeah. recently. Yeah. Yes. So, right. so I, I guess, and then two is if you go in and redo that wall, are you going to have to break it down to the shoreline? It's already so, pretty much broken down to the shoreline. So is this going to require a wetlands permit to go right. back in to disturb this? Because you can't do it without a permit, right? I'd have to talk to Cindy about it and have her look at it, okay. which okay. is our environmental people. So at this time, it's my feeling uh, as a selectman that we wait, we hold back until you get all your information, you pack it into us, talk to Cindy, see what it's going to require. Also, if there's any pictures there, but once we put this wall back up, we are not responsible for it after this point. We will put it back in time. That wall was leaning pretty good before it was we... Leaning, but yeah. do we have pictures? Did we have pictures? Of yes. Kenny, do you I, have pictures before we went over in that corner on that wall? No, I think Paul said he took him in December. In there, in that corner? I think Paul said he took pictures of that wall in December and it was intact. Yeah, and that was leaning back then, right? You see it leaning? I don't know. All right, so I guess I'm going to ask the board was that they want to table this until Mr. Roberts has all the quotes and prices in a week ago, two weeks ago. Oh. That's what I'm saying. From, from what I heard tonight, yes. This equipment, yes. Now. That ain't leaning. Rochelle, we're willing to wait until we have all the information. Yes. Yes. Right. Of this project along with the wall. Yes. And from Cindy. Mr. McDonald. I think that we should get the wall price and give GMI a yes or no, we're near and do it. So at least we're getting the wall done, the walkway up the Harmony Pass, and the beach clean, because we're going to wait for estimates before you know it. We do. We kick the can down the road. We're going to be at the Memorial Day weekend, and that beach is still going to be it. Well, I'm not kicking right. the can down the road. I want to know what the cost of them to finish this job and get it done and done right. So we have to wait another week. Roberts, a few weeks is still here. But I'm not going to go in this like we did before. And this wouldn't have that cost. No. No, it's so we don't have the cost of the right. I don't believe it. 
All right, so we'll get to the board is wait for Mr. Roberts has all information for us. Yeah, all right, Mr. Roberts, we're going to table this matter until you have the rest of the costs associated with it. <laughs> where you recommend that the money comes out of where we can get the money from this between you and the town administrator to cover the costs. Does that sound okay. good? Thank yes, you, sir. Close the beach in September. Next item is going to be number six, Shibley's. Oh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, last meeting, Virgil, you had a uh, concern with the uh, permit that I was talking about for quite a while. Well, I've done some more investigation <laughs> since then, Virgil. I've got it all right here. Uh, 2011 permit? No. No. 2001. Uh, I've got the state application, I've got the state permit, I've got the town of Alton's permit to rebuild the dock that we're talking about. That was on the other side, wasn't it? No, no that was sir. the one in the front. No, sir, there's pictures of it right here, okay. uh, which is what we don't have much of, pictures. They rebuilt the one over by the other side. Nope, this is it I right here. Rebuilt one. This, this is the dock in question. Uh, they did this. They did the three pairs. They did all new planking, four thousand uh, dollars. That's the estimated cost. Mountain is the state application. Got the state permit here. There's the. Yeah, they didn't rebuild. They just put the top. No. No, they just just on the top. They didn't. No, they did. They did the existing clips. So they did. They, they, they put clips. new caps on the guys. Guys, one at a time. Okay. One at a time. Because you're all over there. You're talking yeah, into the phone. They rebuilt the top. Yeah. And they uh, did uh, three caps. Yeah, the yeah. caps okay. at the top. That was yeah. it. Yeah. No, and they did all new plant. Yeah, that's the top. And what year are you saying? 2001. 2001. But I'm trying to. What I'm trying to prove is town ownership. Right. And I can't. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's agreed. It's very difficult. I have a lot here as well. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah. You have to prove town ownership to fix this stuff. Okay. If the town okay, ownership. here's where I want to stop. Here's where I want to stop. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir. Here's where I want to stop. Because it's such a gray area and where it's getting to be such a hassle with information, because it's every year it seems like something was a little different. And we don't have definitive information. We got it what right I, here, Paul. It's I'm not sorry. it's not black and white. This is There's nothing here thing. that's black and white in ownership. This is black and white. I don't have anything here in black and white. And the D This is just a construction permit. Yeah. He, that's not even black and white. No. That doesn't prove ownership. No, but I, I'm not saying it proves ownership. I'm trying to prove that the town of Alton owns that. And every time I pick something up, mm -hmm. if Mr. Shibley's going to spend four thousand dollars to rebuild the town dock or yes. to fix the town dock, is Mr. Shibley going to spend tax dollars, pay taxes on that town dock for I don't know how many years? That's the next thing I'm looking into. I want to know how many well, years. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. I'll heard it, heard it. Tax taxes on a leased land from town. Leased land. That's not land. That's all considered land. For the whole thing. Oh, that's considered that's land. I have all right, guys, I'm going to call. It, I want to call the meeting back to work. That's all considered land. <laughs> and it. I can show that on here too. I'm going to call the meeting back to work because we're getting yes. out of here. Yeah. Just the whole. If you like the information you gather, have copies made up and distributed to each collector. So yeah. then, when we bring it back up, we discuss them on the meeting. Everybody knows what you're talking about. And then we'll schedule it for another meeting to discuss. The town administrator, Paul, had been given this task to, this, to look at everything, research everything. We've asked the new town assessor uh, mm -hmm. to look at, review all these records. Can so when we discuss this again, I'd like to have the town assessor here. Can we, well, can I say, let me just finish and have this on a meeting that we don't have. Here's what I'd like to do, if we can, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to have a workshop with the selectman, with Mr. Shibley, the town assessor, and Jim Cecil, the attorney. 
and sit down and pound it out once and for all. And can we? And to prove ownership of either we own it or we don't, and to see what Mr. Shibley would like to do. And Liz, can we have the tax assessor get the copy of the deeds from Madeline Adams right up through to when the town took it over? There's more. Uh, there's a. I have the deed. From when the town took it over from back with no, Matt. I have the deed from Madeline Adams. Yeah. To. Right. Bear, bear, the and then to the town. So perhaps during the workshop I could explain more. But you can't follow that deed up through the sales? No. Why? You, just, you go to Nielsen's deed yeah. and then go to um, that was Bears. I know, but I'm trying to think. I can't remember his last name. And then it went to Bunker. So there, there was a hiccup. All right. So all right. still got to be at the there register of the deeds. Workshop, but there is a hiccup in the trail of deed. It's, it's got to be under that. Yeah. There. What's the hiccup? All right. So at this time, I'm going to stop now because this was not part of the really the original agenda items. There's too much paperwork out there not all of us have. So I'm going to let Liz go back to it. That's why I'm trying to find out if we can follow that trail. There's got to be a way to follow well, that she, trail. She, she, she's, still, she's still researching. Or well, get a title company to do it. And Mr. Sessler has been researching. Yes, he has. Before. That's why I'm calling for a workshop. So I, I want to put this off to we have workshop. We we wrote that off. There's no trespassing on the dock. Correct. There's no trespassing on the stairs. It's going to take a little bit to get everything done. Can I tell you? Can I so say something? On, and then she's going to look into it. I think I can go back and give her some information on the time that Bear and Bunker purchased the property because they both came before the board of selectmen asking for the lease to be transferred into Mr. Bunker because the Bears are moving. Right. And that was. So at this time, I'm going to ask that we stop this, we'll go back to the workshop. We'll have Liz and the town assessor and the town attorney present us this case. Mr. Holt, if you have the information you got, you want to make have copies made up in town hall by Mary to be distributed to us, along with what Liz is going to give us, and give us a couple of weeks to look at it and review it. Because I know in between my business and stuff, I'm not going to be able to sit right there and get it done. I was out of there in the mid 90s, towards the end of the 90s. Bears Bunker took it over from the Bears. Right. Let's do that research and find out. That's not fine. That's not fine. Yes, sir. I'm Mr. Chairman. I'm trying to prove town ownership. I'm not. But every time I look, put me in the other direction. And I haven't got anything back that won't. Maybe I, we can do it now. Maybe I can get here somewhere. And that dock does need to be fixed. Yes, it no does. No arguing with right. that. Of course. It's, 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 but strictly, whole, it's yes. strictly my opinion. I And the only reason I brought it up tonight was the comment you made last week, Virgil. I still think the town should go down with the excavator, lift the top off, oh, and fix oh. the cribs and put it back on. I, you made a comment that my permit was for his house. Oh, the 2011 that's permit that they right? said at the delivery session was the 2011 permit that Lauren said was 2011. And that was for the dock at the house. This is a 2001 permit. Yeah, but he said this the 2011. The talking about since. Right. So what happened at the delivery session? As the past, we can't change anything about it. What we can do is go on from there on in from now. Yeah. Figure out where every, all the paper lies. Yes. Wait for the recommendation coming back from town administrator, legal counsel, and then it's town assessor. Can we call Russ and ask him because he'll probably know right where to go for the deed? We have all the deeds. We have. So at this time, yeah, this time I'm going to move on. We're going to move on to old business. Gentlemen, it's not fine? Yes. Okay. Moving on to new Mr. Roberts. Highway Department Excavator Repairs. Mr. Roberts, are you back with us? Yes, I am. Okay, sir. Yes, I am. Thank you. All right, before you gentlemen, you have a presentation. Can I? Oh, go ahead. To yes. Repair, do repairs to the excavator this winter, coming winter, the early spring of 2021, at $37,994.88. 
Mr. McDonald, I'll let you go ahead. We discussed this a little over, about a year ago or so, a little over a year. How come we didn't send it in this winter and use some of the leftover um, road reconstruction money to get this thing done if the motor was, if you're losing power already before we screw something up in that motor? Wasn't authorized by the Board of Selectmen to utilize any money in road reconstruction. But it was going to come back in front of us for the motor to, to get it done in the winter. I don't don't disagree. I'm just saying that uh, it wasn't authorized by the Board of Selectmen to use road reconstruction money. We weren't doing any road reconstruction. You can't send the excavator in when you're not doing the road reconstruction. Now that we are, we can put the excavator in and take it out of road reconstruction. Jim, we could have still used that money that was set up for road reconstruction. As we know, we're going right back into it. Mr. Rochelle. Hey, can you clarify what is being done and what is wrong with the engine? The what they're going to do is because it, between eight and 10,000 hours, which this thing is pushing the numbers, it's recommended to rebuild before failure. If you put failure on the end of that, you add a whole lot more money to it because it hasn't failed yet. So the engine can do it. So in talking to the operator, who was Matt, you know, he said, you know, he's losing power in his, his hydraulics. Now, not a lot, but, you know, if you run it every day, you realize that you don't have the power you started. with. Right. So the two things that we wanted looked at was the engine rebuild mm -hmm. and the hydraulic rebuild, which is okay. both listed right there. And hopefully we can get another six or eight years out of this. For a cost of thirty-seven thousand for six or eight years, I think that's a pretty oh. good number. Oh, yeah. Didn't we also just replace last year work on the turn table? Bottom. No. We put a no, bottom we on. we a did the bottom, bottom a couple of years ago. Yep. Now when they did the bottom, they do the change too. Yeah, they replaced everything that was necessary, and that's the reason you're looking at the numbers you're looking at is that right. depending on what they run into, and again, it's only an estimate. You know, hopefully they don't have to replace everything and the cost will come in cheaper, which it did on the last little ordeal. When we did the lower end, it came in a little bit cheaper than what we originally estimated because some things didn't have to be replaced. They were really in pretty good shape. Well, that's, so, so your intent then is to uh, do the repairs, use this, keep it for the next six years, and then trade it in or sell it. Right. Either that or you put it into the rotation and it's approximately $240,000. I think for thirty-seven thousand, we can we can get away with it another six to eight years. Now, you, Kenny, I have you have a question for you. Mr. Holt had one for you though. After Mr. Lorshell, Mr. Holt, uh, I got a couple. Uh, how come being new on the board, Kenny? Uh, how come this wasn't budgeted in your budget process? Because I think. Uh, according to what I can see here, we this is an older problem. It just didn't pop up. Well, it's not an older problem. It's something that we've always done. Everything we've done on that excavator, because road reconstruction has always been into effect, has come out of road reconstruction. So we rebuild the bucket. We Whatever we do, we've taken out of road reconstruction, but that was the mainstay of what the excavator is. So according to the way the Warren article and everything read, that we could utilize that money to keep this machine working, that road reconstruction. So to become a part of the operating budget, we wouldn't have known if it was going to be a part of the operating budget until road reconstruction failed. And it's a little late to go back in after everything fails. Well, uh, that's another issue I have. I have a problem taking it out of the... Road reconstruction budget. Why? Why? Well, wait a minute, Bertie. Why? Yes. Have you read the re road reconstruction budget? I mean, have you read the Warren article? Mm -hmm. What does it say? I'll read it to you. It, it, there's nothing in here about maintaining equipment. This excavator is used for other things also, not just road reconstruction. It was used for ditching last year. We didn't have road reconstruction last right. year. Wait a minute. This is Wait a minute. Bob, I'm going to interrupt you for a minute. This question is directed to Mr. Roberts. Uh, Mr. Roberts, answer the question. And then I 
I'll ask my questions and I'll let you come back in. And uh, if you read in your highway budget, you have a uh, $60,000 vehicle expenses. And if you read the backup, that's what it's for. It's for all your equipment, equipment expenses. Now the road management program, the Warren article, it spells it out pretty, pretty good. Highway construction capital reserve fund is previously established by, by, by set amounts partially offset by revenues from the highway block grant estimated 201,000 this year. This is an annual appropriation that provides for the reconstruction of existing roads. It's recommended by the board, by the way. That in no way should that be used to maintain vehicles. You, what if you need a new engine in a dump truck? Are we, you, we're gonna charge it off to this account? What's the difference? Piece of equipment's a piece of equipment. You have a $60,000 line item. You should have put more money in that line item this year to fix that piece of equipment. You're looking for an answer from Mr. Roberts or are you looking for- I, I want to know why. Mr. Roberts, can you answer that question? When the approach was done with the Board of Selectmen previously, it was said that any expenses that is related to the excavator, because it was specifically bought and maintained for road reconstruction only. That's what we did. And then every year, that's all that excavator did was road reconstruction. It didn't go outside that line and do anything else until last year. Road reconstruction did not pass and it did go someplace else. And in the discussions last year, we, we discussed it last year a little bit of where we would do, are we gonna put it into the rotation? It is in the rotation, it's in capital improvements. You can look at it right now. It's $240,000 purchase next year to buy a brand new one. The approach that came to the Board of Selectmen was, do we get the maintenance? We take it out of road reconstruction. We, we've already done the lower end. Now, if we do the upper end, we could get another six to eight years out of that and stretch out the capital improvements plan so it, it's not another big hit. That was the, the way it was kind of addressed. But it was decided previously by the Board of Selectmen that the maintenance for that excavator would come out of road reconstruction. Make Does that answer thing. the question? Okay, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm going to stop here because I gave you your questions. I'm going to jump in next. Oh, I got a couple of questions. We'll go back around and say, I, uh, okay. You said you had two questions. Yeah, you asked the two. I just got one little comment. I did not know that this was how you took money out being a green selector. I did not know you took it out of this account to maintain that. A lot of things have happened over the years since you were here. Even when I came back, the things have changed the way things have done. Ken, I just want, I want to go over to the first page. Repairs include the $3,676. Removal and installation of all parts and components to access the engine. All labor to disconnect, remove and reinstall and reconnect the engine. Labor to disconnect and reconnect the air conditioning unit, minor seals, gaskets, clamps, and hardware. Up to one gallon of each topped off food for all related compartments. I go to the second page. It says to install engine, engine, there's two. When I go down there, labor total is $1,800. If I go to item three, which is remove and install hydraulic pump, I get another labor bill of $1,100. So am I re re misreading this contract or are we being double dipped for the engine for labor? I think it's misreading because what it is is, after they, they have to disconnect, like radiators got to come out, all that stuff's got to come away from the engine, then they take the engine completely out. They have a machine down there, and I, if you've ever been through the new cat plant, you'd really enjoy it. They have a machine, they take this down, they rebuild it, they actually put it on a machine, rehook everything back up, and they test that engine before it even goes back into the chassis. Then they yep. reinstall the engine, and then they reinstall all the components on the outside to go back on. It'd be the same thing with the hydraulics. I guess, I guess the way, only way looking at someone that looks at contracts time and time when they're having re repair work done, it just the way it looks, 34, 3676 on the front page, when you go to install engine, that's kind of like me reinstalling the engine. That's the way I read it. 
just looks like there's a double hit for labor. That's why. No, I think you're just looking at they got to remove everything around it. Then they take the engine out. Then they reinstall the engine, and then put everything on the outside back around it. Well, I understand that. He just tried to break it. I'm sorry. But I, it's where on that first page it says removal and installation of all parts and components to access the engine. So they're already saying they're going to remove it and reinstall it. All labor to disconnect, remove, and reinstall and reconnect the engine. So, I mean, they're already saying they're going to disconnect it, reinstall it, but within that $3,600. So, and then the air conditioning unit, which that's nowhere related in, in there. So, uh, it just to me, it just looks like it's less the yes. hydraulic pump, 18 extra hundred dollars. That's yes. the way I look at it. Yes. So, and, and that's what I picked up on. I, I have no problem with getting this done if it's saved, if we send. And I can call Mike and have him rewrite it if you'd like. $37,000 to save $250,000 for another six years. I have no problem with that, but I, I'd just like to know, we did the underneath the year before, we do this up at the top. Are we looking at another 40000 in another year or two years for repairs? No, we shouldn't. We've already done the lower end. This is the upper end. There's really nothing else there. The turntable's in great shape. When they were here to inspect it, that's what they said. We, we went through the whole thing. All right. The boom is good, though, because you did tell me what you were having Nash come in and what do some welding on your boom. Yeah, there was a crack that started to appear, so we went ahead and jumped on it before it got out of hand. So that's all been taken care of. Uh, I have a question for you. Go back to Mr. Well, I'd, like, I'd like to see if Kenny can just ask him about that, because the way you're reading it is correct. Uh, I can Mr. have him readdress it, but I think it's I think it's just a schematic that all the junk's got to be taken away from the outside of the engine and reinstalled around the engine, not necessarily the engine itself. Rochelle. Uh, Kenny, how, how old is this machine? 2004. 2004. What is this yep. machine worth, do you, in your estimation, after spending the money to, to rebuild the engine? After rebuilding the engine? After I really don't the know. After you... Worth. You should be in around, and this is only a guess off the top of my head. You should be in around eighty or ninety thousand. Eighty and ninety. As a guess, yeah, it's a well-operating machine with a lower end rebuilt, the upper right hydraulics. I mean, you're back in the, lack of a better term, back in the game again with a machine that's going to run well. So after this is done for the next six years, regular maintenance, we won't have to rebuild this again. We should this not. No. Ship it down the road the next time. That's what I'm trying to get at now. See if it's worth shipping down the road now. Oh no. Well, the way I the way I tried to approach this for the board of selectmen was, if in fact the numbers come in right to do a lease purchase, the lease purchase would drop the amount to around forty thousand for the two machines, and you'd only have the backhoe installed in there as well. And then at a later date down the road, what you do is because this is a big piece of machinery you'd put that into the rotation as well. Into the lease purchase, then the same thing would happen. You'd have you'd have warranties on all this stuff. And I don't think it would be over the the original number, which was eighty on eighty one thousand in the operating budget. So you take four major pieces of machine out of your capital improvements and you just rotate them off of that and you'll have warranties for everything. Does that make sense? No, it does. I'm just I'm not thinking about buying another machine. That's what I'm thinking. No, I'm just wondering what this is what this is worth uh, now and what it's worth. What we think after it's rebuilt, rebuilt um, that you're saying you, you want to go six years with it, um, and we don't have to do any breakdowns and rebuilds again. That's fine. We should not. We that's should fine. not. How often do we use the SRK? Every day. used all summer long, 10 hours a day, four days a week. And in case of emergencies, it gets pulled out of the cold off of road reconstruction and gone on to something else. And I'm talking about floods and, you know, tornadoes or anything else that might happen that this has to be go and take care of the emergency stuff. But other than that, it does nothing but road reconstruction, with the exception of last year it did ditching. And because so we're just getting the road reconstruction. For four months of the year. 
we're probably working at least eight months out of the year. We, we do it until frost gets in the ground. And previously, we shipped this thing into the cemetery, and it worked in the winter until snow got too deep to work. Okay. It's being used more than I thought. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I, I'm thinking spend this money to save the money. We ought to be doing it. So, uh, you mentioned uh, last year you did the ditching with it. Yes. All right, this year, how are you going to do the ditching this year with it? I'm not. Graders are going to do the last of the ditching. We're ditching with it right now. I'll take that back. Only because the road reconstruction roads are not ready to go. A decision had to be made by the Board of Selectmen tonight and what was said at the last meeting that we're setting up to go in and start rebuilding. The first road should be by the end of next week. We should be into Hayes Road and start the rebuilding of Hayes Road. So we won't be doing any ditching this year? Well, no, he's doing some now. Now, okay, he's after now. Right now. And if they, maybe if they get their projects done, they might go back to it, but it depends on how long his road reconstruction extends out, I would assume. You've used it down there stacking sand right now too, Kenny, right? Yeah, we've thrown it up on the top. Sand, sand is all in. We're actually on the gravel line now. And we're about done with bringing in gravel. So, I mean, it's it's on the road right now. It just completed Halls Hill Road, if anybody would like to go look at it. It just completed the ditching on Halls Hill Road. So it's getting ready to move. I would I'm just sorry. like to make a comment, Mr. Chairman, to you and to the board. I feel we're misrepresenting the public with a Warren article for road reconstruction. And people think that's going for road reconstruction and not equipment maintenance. Not when we have it in the budget, a maintenance account. And that's the way I believe. That's just my concern with it. And it, it, I'll vote to have it built. I mean, it needs to be done. That's not an issue. My issue was where the money was coming. <clears throat> Ms. Ms. Robbins, do you have anything you want to respond to that? Uh, no, I, I, again, it was a decision of the previous Board of Selectmen, and I just abide by them. Okay. Well, the only problem with it that it has to be done, and this is going to be for repairs 37. The funds should come from road construction, which will be done over the winter with an estimated completion date sometime in early 2021. So you will be sending this in when December, Ken? As soon as we shut down road reconstruction, we'll deliver it to them, just like we did the lower end. These monies would have to be, no, they wouldn't have to be encumbered because they're coming out of the road reconstruction fund for what you're requesting. Yeah, they'll just be earmarked for that. And I can notify Kat that to plan on this coming in probably the end of November, the beginning of December in 2021, I mean 2020. So what I could look at or maybe even possibly consider that we approve that the work be, be done on this. And at the time we send it over to CAT, we'll decide then where the money will come from in case you have any extra money in your budget. That possibly we could take some of the money from your budget and then if we had to take the rest from road reconstruction fund, you could do that. Well, we could use it out of that. But we could make the commitment that the work will be done during the winter. Would that be satisfactory? Yes, sir. Take it out of surplus or general government. You gentlemen agree with that? Yes, yes. Mr. Virgin, Ms. Whitmer, Mr. Holt? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The less money we can use out of road reconstruction, the happier I'd be so we put it more in the roads. So I'll take a motion at this time to approve the authorization to get the excavator repaired of the cost of $37,994.88. To be done over the winter of 2020-2021, the spring of 2021, the funds to be paid out of to be no, not to be determined at this time. Second. I'll second. Okay. Motion has been made. So any discussion? Mr. Co any conversation from you, Mr. Roberts? No, sir. I'll pull the board then, Mr. Holt. Yes. Mr. Whitman. Yes. Mr. Rochelle. Yes. Mr. McDonald. Yes. 
Ruben Wentworth, yes. Mm -hmm. Vote is in the affirmative. We'll wait to back in December or at the end of November, Mr. Robbins, to hear from you, and we'll sit down and figure out where the funds will come from at this point. Does that sound satisfactory? Yes, sir, and I'll notify Kat that they accepted right. the estimate. All right, sir, I appreciate it. Thank you, Kenny. Thank Have you. Have a great evening. Thanks. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye. We have two more items left. Number two, IT department, the live stream account. And if Josh could join us at this point. You want me to run your machine for you, Josh? Excellent. Make a bunch of hiccups. Uh, so I wanted to talk about, um, we don't have nothing in that book for, right? No, we don't. No, that's why he wants to talk to you about it. I wanted to talk just briefly about an option that we have. Uh, right now we're streaming video and audio over Zoom. Uh, and I wanted to see uh, if it would be in your favor to do a live stream. Uh, it's view and listen only, no participation involved. Uh, but basically what this would allow for our uh, residents and members of the public to go on the website and without registering, entering in any codes, or doing anything like that that Zoom requires, uh, it would be a, a window uh, with uh, the live stream playing on the website. Uh, so I, I saw that as an option in Zoom that they can connect uh, to that live stream portion, and I figured I would mention it uh, and just see you know, if, you, if you'd all be in favor of of me pursuing that and just looking at that as another avenue of getting the information out to the public. But is there a way that we could set it up so like you could have planning board meetings with people on the Zoom from say the Legion project and people who are against it on there that could talk to the meeting? So that's where Zoom comes in. Uh, Zoom, with Zoom, we get all that functionality. But we can do that. Yes, uh, this is just a branch off of Zoom that allows us to put a, a quick and easy way for the public to go on and watch uh, and hear the selectmen's meetings and other meetings uh, right on the website. Uh, What's that cost? So there would be some cost involved, uh, especially if we went with YouTube. I looked into it. I uh, originally thought it was going to be free, and I talked to a buddy of mine, and he's like, no, it's not free. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, and alternatively, they, they have YouTube, but then they also have Facebook. Um, and I did some digging into Facebook, and it looks like you don't have to have an account or anything like that, and you can still utilize that. Uh, as so that would be just broadcasting our meetings over the exactly. Facebook. Why, right? Right. The, the perk to this is that we're doing this already with Zoom. It's just easier, and it's just another it's just another avenue of providing the access to the public. Would you still need both of Zoom or this one? Or could you have just one or the other? We can have both. I would recommend sticking with Zoom because it, it gives us more functionality. Have both of them? Do you, for that, yeah. do you know what the cost would be to, to have both? I don't have numbers off the top of my head. I can look into that and, and get back to you on that. Big money? So oh, it's yeah. monthly. It's a subscription date. So I think I think what he's saying is he wants to know if the board would be interested or anything in the idea and he'll get us more cost factors and bring them back to us. I'd say yes. Anything that I it's think worth looking at. Yeah, it's worth looking into. Because they still have access to us on the phone as well. And now we have three ways. Yeah. And in a pandemic situation, I think that's an important uh, important thing. Just, just another oh, yes. way yes. for them to see what we're doing. Yeah. I think it's Consensus with the board? Okay. Yes. 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 Right. yes. Go for it. Thank you, Josh. Sounds good. Thanks. Our Thanks. blessings. Moving on to number three would be parks and rec. Yes. Or town parks, I should say. Well, I'm just wondering if we're going to clean them and get the leaves out of them. Or <clears throat> we're going to keep waiting. We're nice. going into May. I, I have to. I know they're busy. They, they are very busy, and I have to assume that they will do that, as they do that every year. But I mean, it's snowing today. You have to wait at least until the snow stops and stuff. Snowing? Just because you see it, don't mean it's collecting. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think what Virgil's referring to, I looked out last week. They came out here and they put some patch grass down. 
some area plates before they raked it up. Maybe add some lime and sweet and soil, but the rocks from the plowing were still left all over the lawn. I think that's where he has his concern. All day. Spring cleanup. Spring cleanup. The sand off where plows have plowed it up. And the acorns. Yes. And I mean, that some of the packs got two feet of leaves in. Now I noticed, and I just think that it, we sh that's we should be doing that now. To for one, before the black flies get in there, and two, there's a lot of people using different packs and stuff. I know you're supposed to stay at home, but you see people mm -hmm. walking through there, just even just trying to get out for a little yeah. bit. It needs to be started. And I think they need, need to, to get started and cleaned. At the next meeting, I noticed that they still think Parks and Look Rec is looking for a grounds person. I think I think it was cemetery. I think it was Parks and Rec. Just hired somebody for grounds like, two weeks ago. Yeah. So we're still looking maybe possibly one more seasonal person, right? Um, it would be for the cemetery, but I'm not sure exactly when. Since you mentioned that. Right. So I guess if you could find out for next week's meeting what parks the and rec, the schedule is the parks and rec, get back to us so we know. Yeah. Just let them know that. Did they have a couple of select them that didn't know certain things after they went and patched some things? You know, I guess where I used to do landscaping and home maintenance for folks, I always went and did all the prep work first, then I went back and did the seeding and stuff like that. Two, it's been a little early for seeding because of the temperature. Ground temperature's oh, not up, so there's a lot of wasted oh. money out there right now for grass seed to be put out. But clean up. Ruben, I don't even do landscaping, never have in my life, and I picked right up on it that it's not what should have been done. Then, I don't think. But you were raised at a different time when you had to go out mow your lawn for my parents' lawn, right? Yeah, and they took care of it. It should clean up. Let's definitely be stopped. We'll have Liz get back to a report and as we come to something. Can you? Does that sound good? Yeah. Thank you. You mentioned cemetery. Yes. Can we have Liz get a hold of Jim? This stone's down by the, in the old cemetery here. That I leaned over quite a bit. Can we get him to make sure that's all taken care of before Memorial Day, just in case? Make sure that that's all. The so stones are stood back up. He has a department head, so I will speak with the department head. I just have him go out and just fix them. I don't care who's the head, but they're leaning pretty bad. And some of them are World War II veterans, World War One, and stuff, and they lean there pretty bad. I just, before they fall over and somebody forgets them and somebody starts screaming. Which cemetery is that? The old cemetery right here, Riverside. That, yeah. I, I would say it would have been number four, but yeah. Well, she mentioned cemetery, and I had forgot about it, so I just figured I'd mention it. Okay. At this time, there's no further new business. We're going to shut off new business. Any discussion? Anybody else? I, I get a quick question. Yes, sir. I hate to keep the chair, but uh, <laughs> do we have a uh, safety committee in this town? Yes, we do. We do? Yes, sir. Okay, because I, I got a list of all the Three towns, over 25 employees have to have a safety yeah. committee for our essays and the state and the feds. And we do have that one, which commences uh, the building inspector, town administrator, highway agent, fire chief, and um, secretary. Right, loss management Good. committee. Good. Yeah. Because I got a list of the okay. committees, and that was not. Let's, as soon as this pandemic gets over, and I know it's your first year, I will come back and ask the reor little reorganization on different department heads that each one will take again this year, okay, to discuss certain issues. Do you have something else you want to add there? Okay, I thought you did. No. Okay. So at this time, being no more new business, I'm going to move on to town administrator's reports, which she kind of passed over to Mr. Heath earlier. You might have one. Maybe. I, yeah, I just have one thing. Just, just, just for informational purposes to let you know, it has to do, it has to do okay. with the solid waste department. Yes, just one. Well, I had four. Just make but sure you're okay. Um, so with this state of emergency, very busy up there, as you know, because things have come to you for waivers of fees and the influx of uh, people. But uh, last week, the superintendent let me know that most likely his budget will be overspent. Uh, he stated with a lot of work, schools closed, the seasonal residents coming into town, everything has increased significantly. Um, the, and the employees are very busy. Um, as Two examples, the regular household garbage has doubled in quantity, and we pay for that by the tonnage to have them take it away. Uh, and the tin cans is another example, which normally fill one of the large containers every three months, being filled every 28 days. And 
there's a cost to that to have those taken. So he wanted you to know that it appears that most likely his budget will be overexpended this year. It's just that's a what, heads up, informational only. That's what we had mentioned back at the beginning of this that yeah. he was probably going to be over it. Yeah. Does he need help up there? Because I know the place is just mobbed all the time. It was crazy, son. Has he got enough help? I will, we check, with him I to, will check with him. Maybe we have to send a, one of the town crew up there on a weekend or something. It, it, it was pretty busy. It's smart. It was mobbed. It's it's crazy. Crazy. Kenny's guys way during the day. Put them up there and send They them. usually, no. They, they don't work Fridays around 4 10. No, but you're going to end up paying time and a half. So you go over He's up there most of the time, anyways. Huh? We have a town crew guy up there most of the time, anyways. Shouldn't have any now because he should be back in full staff. But, we full staff. but if he yes. needs help through this, it's put it on the emergency right. management and get him the help he needs until we get through this. So, all right, there's no more recycling up there. To speak of. Just right. the key. So we're going to move on. From the town administrative report, she says she's all done. If you want that on the agenda, we'll put it on the next week's agenda. All right. Well, you're also got the we're scale. We're going to move on to approval of minutes. Cans going, and when you change April 13, 2020 to... regular. I'll make a motion. We approve the April 13, 2020 meeting minutes. Second. Motion been made by Mr. McDonald, second by Mr. Rochelle to approve the minutes of the April 13, 2020 minutes. Any discussion? All those in favor, I'll call the board. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. Rochelle? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wentworth? Yes. Vote is in the affirmative. April 13, 2020, non-public. Yes, ma'am. Um, these were uh, sealed by the board previously. I recommend that you release them. All? Yeah, there's just one issue in it. Yeah. Make a motion that we unseal the April 13, 2020, non-public session. Second. Motion is made by Bernard McDonald to unseal the April 13, 2020 non public session. Second by Mr. Whitman. Any discussion? All the board, Mr. Rochelle? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wentworth? Yes. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Motion in the affirmative. <clears throat> April 20, 2020 meeting. Regular minutes. I make a motion that we approve the April 20, 2020 minutes. Second. Motion made by Mr. McDonald to approve the April 20, 2020 regular meeting minutes. Second by Mr. Rochelle. Mr. Whit, I'll hold the board. Mr. Whitman. Yes. Mr. Miller-Shell. Yes. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Wentworth. Yes. Mr. Holt. Yes. Vote is in the affirmative. April 20, 2020, non-public. I make a motion that we... Oh, yeah. We're just going to look at you. Look. Okay. I'm... I ask you about these. So this is one issue. You've already sealed it. It needs to remain sealed. So you don't need to do anything except Just for approve the minute as, pre as presented. And we don't have to say keep them sealed. No, nope, because they already are. They will be automatically. So I need a motion to April 20, 2020 non-public session to approve so as submitted. Yeah. Motion made by Ruben Wentworth to approve the 2020. April 20, 2020, non public session minutes as presented. Mr. Holt seconded. I'll pull any discussion. I'll pull the board. Mr. Whitman? Yes. Mr. Miller Shaw? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wentworth? Yes. Mr. Holt? Yes. Vote is in the affirmative. Next item on our agenda is consent to gender approval. That's the water one. That one is. Yes. You have a water works department abatement on two, yes. So move, Mr. Chairman. Made by Mr. Holt to approve the consent to gender April 27, 2020. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Paul Rochelle. Any discussion? Hold the board. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Wentworth. Yes. Mr. Holt. Yes. Mr. Whitman. Yes. Mr. Rochelle. Yes. Vote is in the affirmative. Discretionary action on requests for appointments. There is being none. There is also non, no non-public session tonight. So I'll take a motion. Consider adjournment. Who we'll moved? Second. Motion to adjourn Selectman's meeting of April 27, 2020 at 7.48 p.m. Second by Mr. Whitman. Any discussion? 
I told the board, Mr. Holt. Yes. Mr. Whitman. Yes. Mr. Rochelle. Yes. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Wentworth. Yes. Vote is affirmative. Thank you, folks. Thank you to the public for joining us tonight and putting up with us in your homes. We hope to see you again next Monday night, which would be, I believe, would be May 4th at 6 p.m. Same time, same channel. Thanks again. Thank you and have a good evening. And be safe.